we have unmuted the microphone. I don't know why it isn't working. I can see here it is supposed to be working. I don't know what is happening. I have no idea what is going on. It says here that all systems are go, that everything should be okay. I don't know what else is required of us to do because insofar as I'm concerned, I have unmuted the sound. I don't know if people can hear me. I want to know if those participating can hear me. If you cannot hear me, then there may be a need for us to try to rejig the entire package because I, my voice should be coming out and I need confirmation right across the board that my voice is coming out. I know that we are live on all other platforms like IPOB Community Radio, we are live on satellite, we are also live on radio, Biafra app. But I don't know if this new technology we are trialing today is doing the business. That is what I need to know. That is what I need to know. I do not know if it is working or not. I need to know if it is working, please. If it is working, do try to confirm with us. Do try to confirm with us. I need to know if those watching on this very new platform, if everything is okay, because I can't hear anything at all. So I do not know if you're getting it. Yes, Castro, thank you very much. Castro is saying that they can hear me. Castro is saying we can hear you. Therefore, I want this distributed everywhere. People are saying they cannot hear me. I don't know. Some people are saying there is no sound. Joseph can I saying there is no sound. I need confirmation, please. I need confirmation, please. If you don't have any data, if you if you cannot hear my voice, it could mean that you have not completed your name registration or that you do not have any data on your phone, in which case we ask you to go and do something about it. Because I can assure you categorically that my voice is coming out, it's been confirmed. Even Chinas has confirmed it. They say there is no sound on this page, but on other platforms it is very clear. Those of them that have come on this very page to listen on StreamYard, they cannot hear anything. My secretary is saying that sound is coming out, is coming out loud and clear on IPOB and on FM. Somebody is saying it's coming. Those saying they cannot hear anything are those in the zoo. Chineke Hojo, unbelievable. But not minding, we are proceeding. Please endeavor to share the links as widely as possible. It is an impromptu broadcast. People everywhere, right across the face of this very planet, they are listening, they want to participate, and we want them to participate. Because we are live and we are direct. And the whole world is bearing us witness the whole world is bearing us witness. There is no sound on YouTube or Facebook, only on the app. I don't know what the hell is going on. I have no idea. I have no idea at all, at all, at all, what is happening. I don't know. They said they cannot hear me. YouTube channel is good to go. Uh, Biafra Television is carrying us. Facebook, they said there is, Facebook, they said there is no sound. I don't know how to rectify this now. My screen here is not on mute. I have unmuted it and I do not know what is happening. So I believe that the best thing for us to do will be to try as much as possible to be on as many platforms as possible at the same time. In which case, those of you with Facebook access this evening or wishing to listen to us via facebook if at all they will allow us to go in because what facebook tends to do these days is they shut us down across all platforms they shut us down completely across all platforms that we may not be able to broadcast that is what they are doing and we are doing all we can in our little way to try and fix this very problem I do not know why there is no voice coming out, in which case we may have to. The screen I have here in front of me, I have unmuted it on StreamYard. Still, there is no voice coming out. 
there is no voice coming out i do not know what else we can do about it i have no idea let us try once again to see if we can as a matter of fact be able to get this very platform going this evening this is a live presentation this is radio biafra we are live and we are direct and we are trying out new technology because the powers that be those that want to determine how we reason are doing their best to make our life a misery but we are also doing all we can to make sure that they do not succeed that they do not succeed we are on youtube but i need to know where we are on youtube and if where we are on youtube people can be able to get what we are doing very very important very very important please do bear with us do bear with us please do bear with us we are trying all we can to make sure that we fix this very program this evening please do bear with us do bear with us we are doing all we can to come to you live and direct as we promised you we would i do not know if we are live and direct at this precise moment but what i can say to you is that we are doing all we can to try to rectify this problem anybody who understands the way we work anybody who knows the way we work will know will know that we are doing all we can to fix this and we are about to enter our studio and i need confirmation i need confirmation to make sure they said we i need to click on add i have no idea what that means click on add whatever that means i do not know it says click on add or else it may not come out i have no idea i have no idea what is going on but let us try and go live right now to see if everything is going to work the way it is intended we are live at this precise moment i believe we have gone live and i need confirmation i need conf there is no mute here anywhere everything has been unmuted i don't know if people can now hear us on those very platforms on StreamYard, can you hear us i need confirmation on StreamYard. can you hear us please if you can hear me please let me know if you can hear me please let me know we are live on direct on a couple of places they are saying people who say they are listening but we need confirmation that the voice is coming out on stream yard because we are going to do a lot of things with this device i don't know if facebook have actually gone gotten to them we do not know we do not know i need stream yard please i need stream yard can you hear me on stream yard please because we are going to do many things because during my next broadcast we are going to come live to you via my twitter handle and also instagram so we are doing all we can to make sure that we are ripe for that very occasion i want to know i know that ipob community radio is good we know that things are happening we are using stream yard so i want to know if people can hear me on stream yard but notwithstanding we are proceeding because we know that our apps are working we know that people are listening via that very platform we must proceed with the time now standing at precisely 14 minutes past the top of the hour this is a radio biafra live presentation my name is Nnam the Kano, and i am the leader of the indigenous people of biafra and by the very special grace of the most high elohim chukukikabi amapurumi a servant of the most high god we are here to serve you in truth and in every honesty. I lead IPOB, the largest mass movement on the face of this very earth. I direct radio, Biafra and Biafra television. And we are doing all we can to make sure that our voice is heard all over the world. All over the world. On this very platform of StreamYard, nothing is happening. But we'll try and rectify it next time. But every other place, we are live and we are direct. And I believe even on some platforms on Facebook, I don't know if we are live on Radio Biafra page as well. I don't know what is going on. I don't know what is going on. In other words, we have to 
disengage from this very platform and then endeavor to try somewhere else. I do sincerely and wholeheartedly apologize for this very uh, delay, so to speak, because it wasn't intended this way. This wasn't what we planned, but that was how it turned out. That was how it turned out. And you cannot believe what is happening this evening. <laughs> Even <laughs> the, 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 the Facebook platform that I wanted to use has gone, it's gone blank. This is very, very strange. It has gone blank. Oh, dear me. It has gone blank. University of Radio Biafra is not transmitting. It has gone blank. Unbelievable absolutely unbelievable you need to bear with me because we are trying to rectify this very problem if we do not fix it this very day our enemies will think that somehow that they have prevailed that they have prevailed and we are saying to them that there is no way they can prevail because what we are doing is something that Elohim Chukukika Biyama directed us to do directed us to do. I need confirmation that we can be heard on numerous Facebook platforms. That is what we need to know. Can you hear us on numerous Facebook platforms? I need confirmation, please. I need confirmation before we can proceed. I do need confirmation. Are we coming out anywhere on Facebook on this very earth? I want to know. They said the voice is broken. They said the voice is breaking. IPOB community radio that the voice is breaking there as well they are doing all they can to try to attack us and we are going to show them that we are more than prepared for this very occasion the world must hear the truth about what is happening in the damnable zoological republic the world must hear the truth and that is what they are YouTube is good. Community radio. I said Facebook. Are we coming out anywhere at all on Facebook? Are we anywhere at all on Facebook? I need confirmation, please. Because I have a very, very important gospel to preach. And that gospel we are going to preach this very evening, regardless. They said it is now very good. IPUB Community Radio is very clear. Thank you very much for that. People must go down and download it. of confirmation that we are coming out on facebook we are coming and out i'm on doing all facebook. that but i also want to go and use a particular how can i put it i want to go and use let us see if it is working go and check all those on facebook can go to aiden dillon go to aiden dillon and we are live on that very platform i believe uh, that is Facebook permitting. I can see them turning here. Yes, we are live on Aiden Dillion. Please, Chena Samuru and all the rest of them, make sure you share it everywhere. Tuning is fine. People must go and get their apps, please. By the next broadcast, we are going to rectify whatever difficulties that we encountered this evening. Then, and also, my new app is out, and we are going to put that also on the market so that everybody will be able to download it is of course free somebody said obina is listening from the cameroon and it is very very clear that's what he said from the cameroon and it's very very clear 
if you go to Edin Dillion, you should be able to watch us on that very platform and you can go there and share it everywhere else. We must now proceed and we're going to pray. As it is customary for us on this very platform, we are going to call upon the Most High Elohim to come and take pride of place in our proceedings this very evening, morning, afternoon, night, or wherever you are. In the whole, should I say, distress of trying to rectify the problems that we had, I have not been able to greet you, of course. We know that today is the fourth day of February in the year of the Most Elohim, 2021. And the time now is 21 minutes past 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra. Allow me to say rather belatedly, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. This is a live presentation and we must pray so that I can preach for you what I have for you, what I have in store for you this very evening. Biyoso sezi chine ken nan ke prumi yeni no nye kremado dendo. Chine ken nan kusu ni len ken diaga. O nyo bo nane ya na cho nye kere yeni ne kere ke mano wego nye kere ya. O nye mwa na madu na pisi ala nye. O nyo bo nane ya kambari gwe ne gosi olu waka ya. O nyo bo nane ya na zopotande ya. O nye sinata ma anho na mpabu nki jipti uwe zopota umu yabu ndi Israel. Kasi kwenye ado kono potin kete zende nso. Kiwe zopota aproge umu gebonde biafra. Ndi tulu kono na nke bila den kosistema ke obode kwe nsubu zu. Nke brite ni keputa. Ani wena ado kiwe batra nyo senye maka ni hino nane bu chine kena. Aya nge faro so bo nane ka ngon tukwa si obye bono nane nke bila den kosi. Di kisi we nye ni iwu. Ni agyo mwegi bu chine kene ze bila den kosi. Ni amade den drage ngwe choso mati nye nge. Anyo wanyo mwegi choso tinye nge nge ze bila den kosi. Ani wena ado kene nane ki igwe. Ki igwe tinye obode kwe nsubu zu nuzi nge nge. Ki igwe tinye obo akana ni titi ndi nane nye nene nane ki igwe. Nu upo tin keta ka kan si hawe pa hono. Ka hawa bundi kumni ka hawe pa bumo nene nane ki igwe. Ndi diye tuwa bundi nge tinye obo akana ni titi ha. Ani wena na do gese bo beden gozi ka ha na agbara ta ndida no wona won teje mu yeze eze ndi so gozi na gozi cho ga ti ndi ru anya azu ni hele nko mu ha biko bi aki we meko wa ba ho chu ma le kwa nyo wani bu ndi nwe e ho na anya no bi uto ni me nzo puta ge anyo wani bu ndi nwe ezi masi ebe nzo puta ge no Obi emere mbeni na anyi we na bu nwanya ha nso geze bu bede ngozi anyi we na gu nwanyi to chukwu nna nke de nso na obu na anyi ko kwu de ro nye ngom na chineke nna nke bini gwe anyi we na ebuli gelu we na ajaga ma na si ma le nna nke bu bede ngozi anyi bu mu ubeni mbu ufode anyi de ko nwaka we na asana afo so so nna nke igwe batara nyo se nye maka daki we zopu tandegi ni hi na obu na anyi bu chukwu kikabi ama puru mi hene ine obu na anyi bu nye nzopu tam Obu nani ki bonye nye maka. Obu nani ki belu hi madona yel shata ibi katu kukola mwe. Nane kine tu na sopro na ejama. Site ne epi kebima. Rone epi kana adyo ki ise. 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 If you have not brought out your pen and paper, please, may I recommend that you do so immediately. Janja with Alamajiri, bring your slate and your chalk. Because this evening, once again on this glorious platform, on this very finest university on the face of this very earth, we are going to preach the gospel of restoration of the kingdom of light, the kingdom of heaven upon the face of this very earth. That is what we are going to do because that is what we have been mandated to do. This evening, we start with a very simple question because when it comes to black people, especially in Africa, the best way to be able to tease out their reasoning capacity is to try or start by asking them a simple question. Our question this evening is this. Are we prepared, those of you that call yourselves Nigerians, those ethnic nationalities trapped in the zoological republic, this evening, morning, afternoon, depending on where you are, I want you to ask yourself a very simple question. Are you prepared to be honest with yourself? Are we all prepared to be honest with ourselves? Because when this whole thing started, when IPOB, when Chuko Kikabiyama determined that IPOB should come, a lot of people in the Zoological Republic were laughing at us. They called us a lot of names. They ridiculed us. 
that is why when people try to ridicule you please 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 for goodness sake if you're on the path of righteousness do not listen to them that is why they say we are very stubborn but we are not what i'm trying to do this evening is maybe as always to build a context to try to just call preamble upon which the rest of the evening is going to rest what i want to ask this evening to the teeming audience listening to us right across the face of this very planet earth including our dear brother from the cameroon is this are you prepared to be honest with yourself for once this evening or should i say for the next one or two hours i will ask you to jettison and abandon every grain of envy of jealousy and of greed inside you try to acknowledge the truth after this evening you may continue to should i say wallow in your foolish ways but for the, this very evening i want you to be honest for once with yourselves and ask yourself this question can i be honest with myself this very evening and now that goes after asking yourself this question i now will ask you a general question what is the cause of the present insecurity in nigeria what is the cause of banditry, of insurgency, of heightened state of kidnapping and armed robbery everywhere? Ask yourself this question. What is the cause of it? And before you answer this question, please bear in mind that you have the army. They have guns. It's only in Nigeria that the army doesn't defend the borders. They use them to do police work. Ask them, please. You have the army. You have the police. You have um, customs, they also carry arms. You have the civil defense, they also carry arms for your information. You have cost, is it, have I mentioned customs? You have, um, what's it called, um, the, the Federal Road Safety Corps, whatever it's called, they also bear arms. You have agencies within Nigeria, should I call them security agencies? You have DSS, you have military intelligence, you have Navy, you have all these people, they all carry arms. But despite the fact that every, or should I say all of them are heavily armed, the right to kill or to determine who is to be killed exclusively rests with the government. Ask yourself why you still have insecurity in Nigeria. And look back a few years ago, or should I say a few decades ago, was it this way? Even under Jonathan, a highly incompetent and shambolic government, where things are as bad as they are, today under Jonathan. These are questions you need to ask yourself. Should I say, bear that in mind. Are you prepared to be honest this evening? And are you also prepared? Are you prepared to answer this question? What is the cause of the present insecurity in Nigeria? If you can answer that very question, uh, then we are in business, so to speak. Because some of you may not know or some of you know but pretend not to know that the present problem in Nigeria is caused by the Fulani, should I say tribe or ethnicity or group. When I say they say you're profiling, I'm not profiling. Because if you look at the way they approach all these issues in Nigeria, it tells you one thing that they are in it, they, they, have, they know what they are doing. They are part and parcel of this very problem. Don't take my word for it. I don't believe in the zoo called Nigeria. I am not part of the damnable zoological republic. And I will never ever be. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. Don't take my word for it. Take the word of the governor of Benue State. I'm going to play his voice in a minute. The same thing that Governor Autumn is saying now that everybody is jumping up and down for was what IPUB warned everybody about many, many years ago. In return, instead of love, what we got was their miscreants. They are looking for who to scam. They are scammers. They are criminals. They are Yahoo. They are this. They are that. And thankfully, you see, God in his infinite mercy chose those that will be in IPOB to pilot and to propel this movement forward. Can you imagine what would have become of everybody 
had we listened to any of you mouthing your rubbish then. You, you used to curse us, you insult us, you say every manner of thing to us. But we continued. Because we believed in the righteousness of what we are doing. That one day, all of you will see that thing that we saw. And today, it has happened. Hasn't it? I want you to please very kindly listen to the... Don't take my word for it. Listen to the voice of the Benue State Governor. A, a serving governor in Nigeria. So that when I blame the Fulani, Facebook can understand it. Facebook said I was profiling people and I said to them, you don't understand what is happening. One day Facebook will tell us that Nazi party or those that belong to Nazi party are not Germans. That's what I'm trying to do. That's one day, there's a, that's what they'll tell us. Have you heard of any Fulani man rising up to condemn the rape and the killing, the pillaging, the sacking of villages and the land grab going on in the south? All they say to you is, uh, is uh, uh, try and live peacefully. One Nigeria. Let's not rock the boat. The nation should be one. That's all you hear. Not one word of condemnation. Not one single word of condemnation. Why is it difficult for all of you to understand that the Fulanis have come to conquer, to pillage and to take your lives over? Look at what is happening in Yoruba land. Can you see what is going on there? Can you observe what, is, what has been happening ever since? The young man that came up and is now championing that very cause, there is no castigation from any quarter. Yoruba journalists are queuing behind him, writing about him almost every 30 seconds because, of course, they control the media. No castigation of any sort. Even when the young man appeared to have... Um, cast some measure of aspersions on the only of Ife. They quickly prevailed upon him to apologize, and he did, and that was the end of it. Can you imagine if such a thing were to happen in the East? Because people from the East are full of greed, envy, and jealousy. Shame should befall all of you. Look at what is happening in Yoruba land. They are campaigning and raising money openly. Nobody has called him a scammer. Nobody has ever said he's a thief, he's a criminal, he's a rogue. No, not at all. Because they understand that to move from one location to another, they need buses, they need transportation, they need fuel. They understand that. There is no envy, there is no greed, there is no jealousy. Nobody, I, I, I don't see people in Yoruba and queuing up and saying, oh, that thing he's doing, I can do it as well. Oh. No, they are all queuing up behind him. But in the East, it's a, it's a different matter altogether. That is why you people were suffering before God Almighty in heaven determined that IPOB should come. And today we have saved everybody. Without IPOB, what is happening in the West couldn't have happened. You know that for sure. Without IPOB, Governor Autumn cannot stand up to say what he's saying. Because now everybody has seen that there is one immovable... Um, should I say, um, number in this equation, and that is IPOB. Everybody knows that people may fall to the left or to the right. People may be cajoled into abandoning what they believe in, but they know that the soul, the heart of IPOB is strong. We are not going back, not one inch, not one iota. They understand it perfectly well. That has now given impetus to people to rise up to speak the truth. That unspeakable truth, the same truth that we are speaking and they said, that IPOB must be proscribed. They attack those terrorists because we are saying the same thing that people are today saying in Nigeria. Now you know why I love IPOB and you know why we, I believe we are better than everybody else. I say, they say he's very arrogant. I, why wouldn't I be arrogant? Something that this movement saw nearly 10 years ago. Now you're seeing it. Why shouldn't I be arrogant? Why shouldn't I be? I'm a very humble person. And this movement that I lead is the, the, the most humble people in the world. If you doubt me, ask anybody. You can travel from one country to another. Once you come into that country, you say, I am looking for IPOB national coordinator and your problems are solved. You don't understand that? We built a global family. And my happiness is, today is that they are unmovable. You cannot move them. 
I read rather very amusingly that my dear friends and brothers from my brethren from Ududuwala and the Yorubas, that they are rising up to raise money for the young man and I was very, very happy. And they said they want to raise for him 51 million naira. And they raised 4 million in, I think, uh, in less than an hour. And I want them to go on and give him more because he will need it in the coming weeks and months. And I, I saw people jumping up. And, you know, after I read that very article, I had, uh, please, you must forgive me this evening. I'm going to preach. But I want to talk about this IPOB so people can understand it very well. That this, this, this noble family, I call them a noble family because unless you're in, you won't be able to understand what is happening. This noble family, you people, you contribute. Oh, my God. That is why I pray for you seven times every day. The same amount of money that people were jumping up and down to contribute today is what you pay only one consultancy firm in Washington every month. Every blessed month. I said, I didn't say our lawyers, international law. I said, one consultancy firm alone. The people that contribute this very money, you don't know them. Some of them do, and they say, don't even mention my name. I don't want to be known. They are all IPOB. That is the money we pay to our consultants in Capitol Hill, in Washington, every month. And that made me realize that there is something special about IPOB. Too special. And no wonder, not everybody not everybody is worthy to be part of it that is why sometimes if if you allow demon or evil spirit to get into you you leave ipob how you leave you won't know because god almighty in heaven set up ipob with a very puritanical should i say mindset Unless you're clean, you cannot be in IPOB. You can't be. One day I have that, I can say, uh, boss, uh, what, what will drive you away from IPOB, you wouldn't know. You will just wake up one morning and say you're going. Because you're not clean enough. You're not pure enough. That is the reason why we won the argument in the zoo. It is no longer in doubt that IPOB, all these years, they have been right. All these years, they have been right all these years now you understand it don't you that we are the chosen children of god almighty in heaven we are the children of light we are always right of course we are human we are fallible we all know that we are mortals but in the main we get it right all the time and i don't think that nigeria is giving us enough credit for the wonderful work that ipob did for everybody we bore the brunt of every happy is like Jesus Christ. They, they crucified us in order for others to have life. Crucifixion. Crucifixion. Suffering pain. The tagging of terrorism. The, 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 the invasion after invasion. The massacre after massacre. Mbo, Abba, Iwocha, everywhere they were killing us. The same people that were laughing at us when they were killing us, they are now the ones saying, oh, they are right all along ago. But of course, you know, you're about journalism. Shame won't allow them to say that IPOB has been right all these years. And to say sorry, to apologize to IPOB. Now, do you understand it? That is why they're chasing us all over the place. They gave money to Facebook to say, don't allow them to broadcast. They're educating people. Do you know they were blaming me for all the things that were happening in Oyo and in Ogun? They said I was the one that set it up, and heaven knows, I don't know the brave young man. I don't know him. And anybody who thinks that the Yorubas can be subdued or subjugated, they are dreaming. Because Yoruba won't allow that to happen. Not minding that they lost Kwara under some very fishy circumstance. But you will never hear a Yoruba man from Kogi say, Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Yoruba Kogi. I'm not Yoruba. I'm not from Ife. Even in Kwara State, where they have an M.A. of a loring, you cannot have a Yoruba man from Kwara State saying, I'm not Yoruba. But you have a, uh, somebody from Ahaba. Ahaba, not Ahaba, Ahaba, Ahabi Meni, across the river, 
somebody from Onichubo, somebody from Mukwane, somebody from Omo Nede, Omo, U M U, Omo, which means children, Omo Nede. Somebody from a place called Igbo Akari, Igbo Akari. They say, I'm not here, man. I'm not here, boy. Somebody answering me, say, I'm not here, boy. I want the world to understand the hurdles and the obstacles that IPOB had to overcome to get to where we are today. The, we, were, we were dealing, or we are still dealing with the most difficult, difficult, idiotic race on this earth, the Igbo race. Difficult to a fault. Difficult. For no reason, sometimes. Have you ever heard anybody say, even Fulani and Hausa will say, oh, we're Hausa Fulani. That, that was in those days. Have you ever heard anybody say, hey, I'm Fulani, I, I don't meet me with Hausa. I'm, these are Igbo people, Igbo, IGBO. The only people on this earth that will reject the identity. That tells you how difficult they are. And when you think of, when you think, when you ponder how difficult these people are, and how far IPOB has come in terms of the progress we have made. Not only have we not united the entire Igbo family, we have united the... Uh, let me call it Igbo family anyway. Because Ibibio means literally Igbo Igbo. That's what it means. If you go to Google, they will tell you Ijo, Ijo is related to Igbo. This Ijo is... Uh, some of the you those fools, uh, Japanese rubbish, they're from Arochuku. Arochuku. They are from Arochuku. Talking rubbish. According to your own. From Arochuku. Hey, we are not here. We don't want to mix with them. The only people that. Hey. We have suffered, though. I'm telling you the truth. We have suffered. My God. We su the pain is too much. Almost unbearable. A very, very stubborn race. To get them to where we are today. Where they have now accepted that IPOB, <laughs> that these people are going to redeem them. The Redeemer is IPOB and Eastern Security Network. Now they don't. Even to come out and say, oh, we are, in fact, some of them are confessing uh, off camera, in secret. To come and say, oh, we got it wrong. We never knew you people were right. They, they find it difficult to say. How do you know that? Uh, how do you even begin to, to imagine how right we've been on along? See how I never knew that my Yoruba friends and brothers were waiting for somebody like Nam the Kanu to emerge from the West. That's why they were attacking us so because they had nobody like us in their in their own area. They are journalists, not ordinary people. That was why they were attacking us. They had no Nam the Kanu in Yoruba land. As soon as one came up, you, see, you can see the way they eulogize him every day. We now have our own. Do you see it? Let me tell you or prove to you how right IPOB has been all along. Out of greed, envy, and envy, and jealousy, hope you fall. When you see the truth, you bypass the truth. You lie to yourselves. You deceive yourselves. You want to make yourselves feel good. But you know the truth. And that is why the Bible says that the truth shall set you free. Do you know the reason why people are now clamoring and speaking up openly or speaking out openly against Fulani Janja Buddhism? Because they want freedom. And for you to get that freedom, you must speak the truth. That is why the Bible leads us to believe, or led us to believe, that for ye shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Without autumn speaking this truth, I'm about to play for you. The, his people can never be free. TV, TV can never be free. Without Yoruba now realizing that IPOB has been right all along, they can never be free. They must speak that truth for freedom to come. That outspokenness. Even somebody telling me, even TV people are now saying, who's going to be our own name, the canon? That is the truth. 
to prove to you that God Almighty sent us to come, not man. And uh, remember, I used to tell you, at the end of the day, we win. Eventually, we win. It doesn't matter how you look at it. At the end of the day, we win. At the end of the day, Biafra must come. And once Biafra comes, some of you, your job is done. Mine will continue. I don't want to hear the name Nigeria. The way they, they erased the name Biafra from history books, from geography textbooks, is how I want the name to be extinct. The name Nigeria will not exist. Once Biafra comes, some of you can move on. But I will remain to make sure that the name Nigeria is buried, never to rise again. The voice you are about to hear is the voice of the sitting governor in Nigeria. His name is Autumn. You will hear him now to know that we are always right. Chineke <laughs> Manamebele, Lord have mercy. This IPOB, if you don't respect love IPOB or fear IPOB, what are you going to fear on this? Which other phenomenon on earth will you be afraid of? If you are not afraid of IPOB, if you don't love and revere IPOB, what else can you revere on this earth, I ask you? People that saw something 10 years before some of you woke up, told you that Fulani, I told you that they are coming. I didn't miss words. I said, they are coming with every certainty. They are going to come. They will kill you. They will rape you. They will take your land. They said I was a warmonger. Lose <laughs> Tigon. All I'm giving you is gospel from heaven. Anything I tell you comes to pass. Once I pronounce it, it comes to pass. It's a gift from God Almighty in heaven, not man. That's why I tell you with every degree of certainty and assuredness that Biafra will come sooner than you expect it. Now listen, please. I want you to listen. Where has it gone to? I don't know why. It, uh, are there, is, is everything today under attack for some for some reason? I have no idea what is going on. Everything was okay. I tested it before I came on. Now to hear the voice, or maybe channels television, <laughs> maybe they pulled the whole thing down. I want to to play the voice of a governor. For you, a Nigerian governor, so you can hear him and what he has to say about Nigeria and who is responsible. Remember the question that I asked you before, who is responsible for what is happening in Nigeria today? The reason why Facebook took down my page, because I told them who was responsible. I told them who is presently responsible. And I told them who will be responsible in the future for any future mayhem or killings. I want the world to listen to us very, very carefully. Follow what we are telling you very, very carefully. Because the truth cannot be hidden. You cannot hide the truth. Who are you to hide it? You cannot hide it. The truth must be spoken. And that is exactly what we are doing here. That is what we intend to do. That is what we are going to continue doing until the end of time. Because some of you do not understand what the zoo has in store for you. You don't understand. Listen. The federal government, mm -hmm. the presidency must act fast. Because time is going. Yes. From north, west, northeast, north central. Uh -huh. Southwest, mm -hmm. southeast, south, south. There is general insecurity. There is general insecurity all across Nigeria. He mentioned every zone. And who are the people responsible for that insecurity? That is the truth that your average Nigeria is running away from. Your average Nigerian runs away from the truth. We are asking them, who is the uh, uh, bandits here? Uh, uh, headsmen there? Who are those people? You can't answer that question, can you? If you ask, your Facebook will block you. <laughs> Listen. And this is being prepared by herdsmen. Mm -hmm. I want to repeat again. I yes. have made it a petition to the presidency mm -hmm. and to all security agencies before. Yes. That if they want peace, Meyatiala must be arrested. What? These are people who have owned up. Uh -huh. They have taken responsibility uh -huh. that... They 
have king, the man, the rep. Yes. And do all sorts of atrocities. Yes. Full on him here, Their leadership is in Abuja. This is the same Mihet Yala, listen. The same Mihet Yala walking with Hopi Anna in Anambra. The same Mihet Yala walking with Hibazu. And when we say this thing, see, oh, you're, you're insulting your leaders, your governors. How can I, why won't I insult you if you're working with a rapist, you're working with a kidnapper, you're working with a bandit? Mihet Yala came out openly to say, we are the bandits. And people keep, they, they keep pretending. The same Miet Yala, listen carefully, that uh, your so called presidency said that they are legitimate stakeholders, legitimate stakeholders in the governance of Nigeria, a terrorist group. Now, Governor Autumn have quite cleverly matched. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to him in a minute. Uh, I'll go back to Autumn in just a second. What are these? No, 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 let me go back a little bit. What are the sins of these people? What did Miet Yala do? Who are the people responsible for all these crimes? Let's hear it again. Listen. And the federal government, mm -hmm. the presidency, presidency. act fast. Mm -hmm. Because time is going. Listen. From north, west, northeast, mm -hmm. north central, uh -huh. southwest, yes. southeast, mm -hmm. south south, mm -hmm. there is general insecurity. Yes. And this is being prepared by headsmen. Who are the headsmen of Fulan and the Nama? People, the, the same people they say give your land to. Give the same people that Ojus or Carlo gave land to at Lopa. They are the ones propelling this insecurity right across the board. Everywhere you go to the city, who are the people causing it? They say headsmen. Who are the headsmen? Fulan, because they say that is their way of life. Moving cattle from place to place, killing people, raping them, and cutting them up into pieces. When I say these things that are obvious truth, Facebook will take offense because they've collected money from the zoo to try to cover up what is in a sense the truth. These days, in this world we live in now, people prefer to excuse abomination after abomination, evil after evil. Nobody wants to speak the truth anymore. That was why they removed Trump. Once you speak the truth in this world, you're gone. You're no longer politically correct. Where Satan found this power to be destroying good people, I do not know. You can hear him. Who are the ones committing and perpetrating all these crimes? They are Fulani. They are Fulani. Very clean and clear. Fulani headsmen. Now, they said, do not stereotype. Don't aggregate people, don't profile them. And I said, okay, I won't profile you. If it is not a grand design by the entire Fulani Caliphate, or should I say Sokoto Caliphate, well, why is it that they do not come out to categorically condemn what is happening? Never. They have never said, we are appalled at what is going on. Never. Never. Listen, please. I want to repeat again. I have repeat. I repeat. a petition to the presidency mm -hmm. and to all security agencies before mm -hmm. that if they want peace, Mehetiala must be arrested. Mehetiala. These are people who have owned up. They are the ones on the they government of Nigeria. Yes. That they have killed the man, the rape, mm -hmm. and do all sorts of atrocities. And yet their leadership is in Abuja. And nobody is confronting them. Their leadership is where? This is a governor. He sits on the National Executive Council meeting. He is privy to some intel that I do not have. He is privy to some intelligence that I do not have. He's a serving governor of a state in Nigeria. He's telling you those who are responsible. And they are in Abuja. They are in the presidency. You have a, a band of terrorists. As you're so called, because of course Buhari is dead, everybody knows that, unless you're a fool. The reason why they're covering it up is because the same Anyuku, the same Ekuro, the same jealousy, the same greed, the same envy. If we say that Buhari is dead, then IPOB will take all the credit. 
That is the only reason. Stop. That is the, there is no other reason on this earth. For your average Yoruba journalist, it is better for everybody to die than to get up and concede that IPOB, none the can has been right all along. They can never do it. Everybody knows Buhari now. If he was alive, this nonsense wouldn't be happening. You all know that. At least he will say something. <laughs> you know that very well. What you have is a docile, imbecilic presidency. Who are those in your presidency? They are yet yala, according to a governor of a state. Not IPOB, not a Biafran, not a, a from middle bear to TV people. If not for TV anywhere, the whole of Middle would have been gone by now. Because at least they are strong. They refuse to speak Hausa. TV tell them we can't speak Hausa. We have TV language. We can't speak that to Hausa. We can't speak it here. Go and ask. Do your research. Very well. People are there and the so-called presidency. Go please Google it somewhere. Presidency came out a few days ago and said, You must respect our uh, Haneze, uh, Pandev, uh, you must respect me. The same Mieti a serving governor, is accusing of masterminding rape, mutilation, slaughter, land grab, general insecurity. Are you listening? You know, for an I want all these um, idiots that call themselves intellectuals. If you go and swallow the dictionary and you write rubbish, you claim you're an intellectual idiots on social media, fools from the East, especially. In the Akata, they think they know something, but their brains are empty. Do you see how Fulani is defending their own? Even a Fulani presidency is defending a band of terrorists that they themselves said are from Mali, from Niger, from outside Nigeria. Can you at least learn something from them? Efulefu, can you at least learn something? About, of course, uh, asking a liberal man to abandon envy and jealousy is very difficult because it's part and parcel of their nature. That's how they are born. That's how they are wired. Naturally very envious. Naturally very, very jealous. I need you to understand this very clearly, please. A band of terrorists, they have their own in power, in government. They are supporting them. That is why they are moving, because they have the support of their people. That is why they are moving in everywhere and taking over people's land. But you people in your so-called army, I mean, you claim you're intelligent, that I was an idiot I saw doing a video. Hey, Isikwata is in trouble. Hey, Isikwata, get us somebody like a Sunday boy. Let him come to Isikwata. What idiot? He's a normal one here. Taking money from Okezi Bazo. That was why he couldn't mention IPOB. That is how envious the destructive, should I say, the envious nature in an evil man. It is better for him to die than for somebody else to take glory for something that that person worked for. Anyupu. It took Yoruba and every other person to rise up to say, oh, uh, Eastern Security Network is doing very well. For them to now say, oh, they are doing very well. I will never forget. The first people to endorse Eastern Security Network is a Fanny Ferry. But was there. Pandef is there. They will not, not, never. And you put, hey, jealousy. Hey, why must it be them? Why them? Why not us? That is why instead of an, uh, an Easterner to be in a good position in Abuja, it's better that, that uh, it, it, for them, it's better uh, that somebody from Bauji takes it. Why was it possible that they removed an organ and they did nothing? Absolutely nothing. Zilch, zero. They removed this man from, give me his name, from Bayelsa. The uh, uh, DGDSS. From Bayelsa. Broad daylight, they removed him. Bari Obama, he left township from Abuja. He ran back to Yenagawa. Did you do anything? All of you, in your stupidity, you don't know that once you are fragmented, once you say, oh, Amibo, I'm Amibo Delta, Amibo from the river, Amibo from the sea, it makes it easier for your enemies to pick all of you off one after the other. One after the other. You cannot do anything about it. It is called stupidity, believe idiocy, and foolishness. Fulani, even if they are killing you, they band together 
and they defend that murderer and that rapist. Even you people to defend those who are fighting the just cause for you is difficult. And I'm wondering what type of God made you, God, he, what type of evil made you people? Are you that evil? Are you that bad? Are you that satanic? That you deny who you are? Your name is Nyeso Mwike. You deny who you, you deny yourself because of self-hate. Clean up, let me see. It's better for you to go to Sokoto and give them 500 million than to pay workers in your state. That is how evil you people are. I don't know the type of God that made you. I, I don't know where that they came from that made you people. Learn something from Yoruba. Learn from them. Learn something from Fulani. A whole presidency will come out and defend murderers and rapists. Even the midget from Kaduna, El Rufai, that started this whole insecurity rubbish in the zoo, is not a uh, governor's do uh, something. Everybody is entitled to be because they hate IPOB. They hate Nam the Khan, and I will tell you why this evening. Because without IPOB, without Nam the Khan, Autumn couldn't have been saying what he's saying today. Yoruba won't have had the courage to rise up. That is the truth. If you like, let us, of course, one eat you up, but that is the fact. We gave them the backbone to stand. That is why Fulani hates us with a passion. They said these people, they have scattered our plans. They wanted to be in your bushes and in your forest until 2022, then they unleash mayhem. Britain will come and say, okay, they're all Nigerians. Anybody can stay wherever they are. And they start building their mosques in our land. By the time you know it is over for you. Don't you understand? Chuko Gika Biyama asked us to go in 2012. I see what is about to happen. Go and stop it. That's why we are here today. And we have stopped it. Let us listen to the governor once again. Listen carefully, please. These people are arrested. Mm -hmm. When I talked, I was being castigated. The same way they castigated IPOB. Has IPOB killed anybody? I'm asking you a question. But the people that are killing, that, that is why I can forgive anybody in life. But you see, you're a journalist. I can, God, I'm, telling, I'm saying it clearly. I can never forgive them. I come for because Yoruba has what is called the media preponderance. They control the media. Evil will be happening in the East. Yoruba will not write about it. I don't. I, I can't understand why. I don't know why. I don't know where the. I don't know what we are dragging. What are we dra Yoruba journalists? What is it that you are dragging with Biafran? That when evil is happening, when this government is perpetrating evil in the East, you don't write about it. Nothing. A little boy was killed yesterday. Yoruba never wrote nothing about the character about it. I don't know. I, can't, I don't know what is wrong with them. I can forgive anybody in this life, including Lucifer. They're going to. But you see, Yoruba journalists, my God in heaven, the way they wrote, proscribe IPOB. What they're saying on the radio, proscribe, proscribe. But the same people cannot write out of fear. Oh, judge the hand they cannot write about Mietiala. We are the ones fighting Mietiala. If not, that God made it possible for this young man to rise up. We are the ones fighting me at Yala. And that is why the coming of the young man made it possible for the world to now see that, yes, <laughs> IPOB are not the only mad people there. Or maybe the, there are madness uh, elsewhere. Then they started to investigate. They now realize that Fulani is the problem. Now you see it. People committing rape and murder, they are part of the presidency. Obiano stood up and stupidly, idiotically opened his mouth and said, they are part of my government. A rapist about, but the same Obiano asked the army to kill his own people, IPOB, young people at um, Mbo. I don't know how people want to. Uh, sometimes I explain this. I'm thinking people don't quite understand what we are saying. Uh, is it that you don't understand what I'm saying or what? This is a governor. They always castigate you because once you speak the truth in Nigeria, they castigate you.
They call you all sorts of names. They call you, they want to ridicule you. They want to make you look irrelevant. They never knew they were going to meet a POB. You were not going anywhere. They had it, they come, they had it, they fall. We keep marching. They never knew that we would come. You know, they thought somehow he would be like a weekend, give him a few pounds there. He would start building hotels. He would start, uh, start pressing cement, a uh, molding block. That's what they thought. Some said, oh, he's looking for fame. He wants attention. <laughs> I kept laughing at the idiots. And uh, I, will, I will say to the men around me that they, they don't know who we are. They have, no, they have no clue who we are. They don't know where we were born. They thought we are born to start all this primitive accumulation of wealth, like hungry people. I'm not hungry. I never grew up in a hungry home. I had everything. My father sent me abroad to go and study. So I can't, when I look at all these idiots, I, I, I feel sorry for them. Small money given to you to fight for the freedom of your people, you started building hotels <laughs> and hostel. Poverty. Oh dear me. We have suffered the IPOB, I'm telling you. We had to fight rejection even amongst our own people, those you're saving. For many years, we overcame that. We now went outside to preach this very gospel. Today it is resonating everywhere, even with the governor of Benin. Listen. Nothing bad that was not said against me. Mm -hmm. I am this and that. But the reality is here. It is not just happening to Benway State today. It is happening to the entire country. Why is the federal government being silent about this full animal? When will the federal government come out? What did Autumn say, Governor Autumn? Full animal. Facebook, are you hearing? Full animal. That is a governor in Nigeria. Not an Igbo man. Not a Biafran. These are the people that fought the war against Biafran. He's saying full any men. And Ibo Efulefu, Umoko, are you listening? Do you see how the government is defending their own people? And not that they're defending them to maybe go to school or do whatever. No. Everything they do is, is in your face. One uh, Fulani IG goes, another Fulani IG comes in. In your face, you go, it's called Koro Koro, you'll be seeing it. You cannot do anything because you spent very many years selling yourselves down the drain. You now have no face to stand up and to say, what you're doing is wrong. Because if they give you 2,000 naira data, you claim you're an uh, intellectual, that's what I call them. Intellectual, that's what I call them. One intellectual in Enugu will be writing rubbish, writing nonsense. After writing garbage, writing, they give you 2,000 naira, uh, uh, he, he came to give you 2,000 naira a week to buy data. <laughs> ah, dear me, dear me. Yoruba, Pros the proscribed IPOB. But when they want to write about rapists and murderers, they say, Mietiala, Kotal Hore, whatever it's called. And you want me to forgive such people? I can never. I can never forgive them. One of the setbacks of Nigeria is Yoruba journalism. I say it openly. Yoruba journalism is evil and wicked. Evil and wicked. Unless that thing affects a Yoruba person, they will never write about it. Never. Never, ever, ever. The height of wickedness. The height of wickedness. I don't know if they want all of us to be Africans to be to be wiped off from the face of the earth so they can share our land with the Fulani. I have no idea. Yoruba journalism, I don't know what got into them. Very evil and wicked people. Very wicked. Today, as you're busy uh, uh, transporting your wickedness to the east, Fulani was coming and taking your land. You know, you're not doing naked. Because of your wickedness. The, the wickedness you have towards the East is so much that even when Fulani were coming to take your land, you couldn't see them. You became blind. Because you were very, very envious. 
you and the, the intellectuals in, in Igbo land. Um, go, 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 write the rubbish. Every place they write the nonsense. Ask them to come and do what Nam the Kanu is doing. They cannot do it. Okay, bring people. Come out on the road. Let's see how people, they cannot do anything. All they do is that. I'm a fool. I will go see. Write the rubbish. Every place they Proscribed. They proscribe. They outlawed group. Satan, not God. Satan will punish you people. They go to Satan will put, and of course you're suffering now. Are you not suffering? The people who are killers, they are saints. Those who are saints, they are demonized. That's what Autumn is saying. Let's hear him, please. Uh, and criticize. Uh -huh. And arrest his men carrying AK-47. Uh, ca no, no, uh, carrying what? AK-47. And I asked somebody, I asked um, Facebook, I asked all these intellectuals, I asked all these um, um, fools, and I asked them a simple question. Somebody is in your farm raping your mother with AK-47. How do you, you activate self-defense? With, uh, 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 with uh, uh, cassava stem? <laughs> don't, don't, you, don't, you, don't militarize. You, you, nobody has more put violence. But the violent man is raping my mother in the farm. How do I stop him from raping my mother? You cannot answer me. He has AK-47. Please answer that question, please. I'm begging you. Do you see how foolish people are in the zoo? Do you, that's why I call Nigeria a zoo. They say, I say it's not an insult. It's for you to wake up to see how idiotic your reasoning is. Somebody is raping my mother in the farm. Cutting my sister into pieces, taking my land and destroying crops. I'm asking you a simple question. How do I defend myself? He has AK-47. You say I should go and protest. I should write to EU. I have written to EU. No reply. I came out to protest. The same Fulani in the army and police will shoot me dead. What do you expect me to do? Because what do you expect me to do under such circumstances? It's a simple question. That they cannot answer me. Me nobody. If you say, if you go to a, 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 a editors' um, offices, be it this day in Abuja or the Tribune, or not, they are shaking. Once they see Allah, they start shaking. Once they hear about IPOB, everybody uh, close wings. Uh, they proscribed. They, they proscribed. What did IPOB do that you proscribed IPOB because Fulani and Britain told them? The only obstacle to your march to the sea, you see the east. That is where your problem lies, not the west. It's the east. Subdue them. They say, Subdue them, arrest them, kill them. Britain said we are here. Nobody will hear that your case in, in ICC. It's Britain that is defending Fulani. Britain is defending them. Britain. Nothing will happen. Go to the east. Once you go to the east and you get them, then the west will fall. They never knew how resilient we were. That very day they came to kill me and I survived. That assassination was the day their plans ended. They knew they were in trouble. They knew it. They are what? They, of course, you know. The native doctor doing just for them told them that that's, that's the end of you. It seems you went to his house and you couldn't kill him. No, that's the end. Yoruba generally saw the video of the storming of my house. They saw the dead bodies of young men. They saw my, the carcass of my dog, Jack. They saw everything. Yoruba generally still... Some people, some people are born evil, you know. They still talk about IPOB. As a proscribed group, people you came to kill, after killing them, you went back and you attacked them terrorists, whereas you are the terrorist. Uh, after that very incident, I hated black people, to be honest with you. That was the day I knew that uh, black people are poor all over the world because of our wickedness. That is a particular brand of wickedness in a black man that you cannot fathom. I say it in Yoruba journalists. Yoruba journalists are evil, beyond evil, evil. Look at the way they're serenading their own, they're selling him, marketing him their own because it's their own. 
Why do you think NSAS failed? NSAS failed because Yoruba journalists could not stand for Nam the Kano to lead the revolution against the Zulu state. That's their only problem, nothing else. After all, NSAS was almost dead until I went on air to start gingering people or people started phoning in. Isn't it? Am I lying? But instead of Yoruba journalists to say, allow this man to lead this revolution, oh, oh no, he's an evil man, no, 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 who don't want him? Oh, to you, they, they, they said no. Instead of Nam the Kano to lead NSAS and finish Nigeria, bring Nigeria down, it's better for all of us to be suffering. And after that, uh, two or three months, uh, Flanny was in their forest, raping and killing. Do you understand it? Evil begets evil. Listen to uh, we are only playing autumn's uh, this thing. Huh? <laughs> are you listening? Governor of Benway State. Governor of Benway State. Every newspaper scores killed, people killed, everywhere hit. It's no longer news. The people I hold, you may it may sound bizarre. The people that could have educated everybody to understand the dangers of Jan Jawudism was Yoruba media. They control the media everywhere. They used to give money to John Momo of um, Channel's Television, former information minister. Didn't they? To be peddling their lies. IPOB. They, they thought they could demonize us due to me, what they did to Ojuku. Demonize Jaffa, demonize. Demon. Nobody ever knew Ojuku went to Abu to go and negotiate restructuring. Nobody knew. He's a rebel, he's a secessionist. And I kept asking them, secede from who? From what? We were here before the white man came. Are you mad? Yoruba journalists, they repent. Yoruba journalists, you people are the problem. Of, you people are gave full name yet the impetus to be doing what they're doing. Because you failed to publish the truth. You failed to tell people the truth. That is a fact. Let us hear Otto and proceed. Are we second citizens in this country? He's asking government. What, 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 what gives Fulani man superior to any other person? Are you the, Fulani man, a governor, Fulani man, he's calling them Fulani people. They, they are nothing. I don't know. They, they are not particularly bright. They are not highly educated. The only thing is that Britain chose them. Because Britain will never choose a bright race. Never, ever, ever. I will have read in England. Sorry, in Britain, so to speak. I think it was in Glasgow or thereabout. In Edinburgh, I don't know. Once you're smart, Britain will say no. Britain created Nigeria to make it possible for them to control Africa. They thought the idiots they were grooming would control Africa. And through the, those fools, Britain cannot control Africa, but it failed woefully. Because they know that Fulani cannot do anything. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> are they bright? <laughs> You're bright and in the 21st century you're moving cattle from place to place like, like, like a deranged lunatic. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I have spoken grammar like some people. Deranged lunatic, the same sentence. And uh, hey, SO2 boy, I say, hey, intellectual. That's that's how they write. You think they have something upstairs? Nothing. Empty. Moving cattle from place to place like demented monsters. These are the people you gave your country to, to run for you. He's a general. He's a no-nonsense general. Mwokoko. Writing rubbish. <laughs> Why, dear me? Autumn, please finish. Let us go and preach. I'm not their slave. A Bedouin man is not a slave to any flawed man in this country. Mm -hmm. And so federal government must do this. At a point in time, the federal government came out with a policy through the police that even those with license, then guns, double barrel and pump action should surrender to police. How many times have the presidency come out to condemn that full of men are carrying AK-47 all over the place? They want you to give them your own den guns. But they have AK-47 to take over your land and to rape your mothers in front of you. <laughs> and after seeing all of these things, a human being made, born by a woman, will stand up and condemn IPOB. I don't understand it. A child was shot dead yesterday, coming back from school, in our mama, Afo, Afo, Afo. Did you look back over it? 
The Yoruba journalists cover it. They will come to you, oh, surrender your guns, give it to the police. We don't want a uh, problem, insurgency, happening and give it to the police. But Fulani has AK-47, with which they have been raping and maiming people. Why don't you ask them to submit their own guns? No one can answer that question. <laughs> Zoological Republic. Let me leave out on what he's saying is self-evident. It is the truth that is self-evident. Unbelievable. Damnable zoological republic. They never ever speak the truth. When the dust settles down, and I will grant an interview to a frontline media house, all over, they'll ask me, What do you think is responsible for what transpired in Nigeria? I will say, Yoruba media. Yoruba media and the culture of brown envelopism. Very, very sad indeed. We are alive and we are direct and the whole world. That's just the, the, the governor of, um, of, of a state in Nigeria <laughs> telling you what IPOB has been saying from day one. And, and they said, we, we are uh, uh, they're looking for that tent cost in the in the polity. They're heating up the polity. <laughs> Grammar. Grammar. Uh, who said to go now? Now everybody knows that we are right. I've always been right and will always be right. Now listen to me very carefully this very evening, please. Morning, afternoon, depending on where you are. Having dealt with autumn, having established that Fulani is the problem, when will they arrest all these AK-47 wielding terrorists we find every day in our land? And again, to the intellectuals and the flavors in the East, I want to ask you a very simple question, please. Why was it that Sheikh Gumi had to go to the forest to go and see uh, the, his people, so to speak? Why did he go to the forest to go and see them? I'm asking you a simple question. Why did he go to the forest to go and see them? Why? Can anybody answer that very question? Nobody can. But Sheikh Gumi went to the forest to go and see bandits. And not only that, they, they, they went even remorseful, they came out openly to say that um, they can burn Nigeria down. Nobody arrested them. The presidency didn't come out to say, oh, we must arrest him, he's sitting up the polity. No, not at all. Islamic cleric Sheikh Gumi meets over 500 bandits. They know where the bandits are in the forest. Did Air Force go there to bomb them? But they were in Olu, hovering to bomb children. And you want me to live in a country with such entrenched injustice? Sheikh Gumi went into the forest. I'm not telling, I'm telling you from the zoo newspaper what they wrote. Now, listen, the bandits are said to be those terrorizing Shinkafi local government area of the state. The bandits are said to be those who terrorizing, listen, Shinkafi local government area of the state. The meeting was in continuation of the peace moves by Gumi. These are bandits. They kill, they rape, they kidnap, they extort, they murder, they torture people. They went for a peace meeting with killers. I went for a peace meeting with um, Southeast governors in 2017. I wasn't a killer. I came out of, uh, I just uh, uh, was granted bail from det illegal detention, so to speak. I did nothing. I killed nobody. I was only broadcasting my right to free speech and expression. I, the governor said I was a troublemaker. I should come and see them. I went to go and see the governors. After discussing with them, they did not ask me to drop my arms. They didn't say, you have weapons, drop it, nothing. They still called the army to come to my house to kill me. The same governors. But they, these are full army people with guns, AK-47. Full army clerics are going to see them inside the forest, which means that somebody knows where they are. The Air Force knows where they are. If they want to bomb them, they can bomb them, but they never did. But they came to my house with two fighter jets, four helicopter gunships and a full battalion on the ground to invade my compound I wasn't armed I did nothing to them nothing they came to kill me as a result I lost my father and my mother and on the 14th of this very month I'll be doing the one year anniversary of the burial of my parents of course the Sunday if I don't know when 14th is if 14th is uh, in the next 10 days so so to speak 
and um, it will be a very good anniversary because it will coincide with the with the hunt of um, of giant of of ginger weed in our land. Uh, yes, in fact, it's on Sunday. Fourteenth is on a Sunday. That be a moral service to my parents, of course, in my village. My parents died as a result of it. They not only killed my men, they killed my mother and they killed my father as a result of it. Now you know why we can never stop. Now you understand why. Their own people go to the forest to go and see them. These are bandits, these are killers, these are murderers. Nobody is complaining. Nobody, apps, nobody. Ah, you, you, if Sheikh Gumi knows where they are, why don't the Air Force or DSS know where they are? If you go to the papers every day, it's one useless group, one one amorphous group, faceless group. They say uh, 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 IPOB, uh, Nam they can don't divide our unity, so they can conquer me <laughs> with the help of the British. They will conquer Biafra, and uh, uh, and when we write our memoirs or when we die in the next uh, sixth generation, they will say what happened. They, they, they said no, uh, they, they were being nice, as the houses were, and the flannies took them over. <laughs> now listen very carefully please speaking during the meeting top armed commanders of top armed they go to a meeting with their AK-47 have you seen them when they go to meet their governors with AK-47 whereas in the east the mere fact that somebody is an is an IPOB family member <laughs> do you understand it now do you see how foolish people are you cannot say an IP. I don't want to identify with IPOB in the open, no. but in the north, their own full and bandits, they take their AK for them to government house to go and have meetings. They meet them in their hideouts to have meetings. They Sheikh Gumi said they should kill them. But in the east, the, your governor will, your traditional ruler will be the one asking them, come and kill them. I know where they are. You see me, people, uh, informants will be everywhere. You see why they are ruling you? It's not, it's not magic. It's not rocket science. Because they cooperate. They are together. They know what they are doing. They are all killers. They are all murderers. Now listen. The top commanders of the group who were all armed, Kachala Tuji of Shinkafi and Kachala Muhammad, but they don't even know their names. <laughs> but DSS won't go there. No, 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 no. DSS only come to the south. And we are all clapping. DSS, they are here. DSS. Army patrol, joint tax force patrol. But their own bandits are in the forest having fun. <laughs> As a result, they said that thousands of youths do not have anything they are doing. There is no means of livelihood because they impoverished all of you. In 1960, at independence, Azikiwe and Awolowo begged. Uh, the Sardan of Sokoto, Amadu Bello, please allow these your people to go to school. They said no. Only few families will go to school. The rest will remain impoverished. That is how they control you. So when you go to the mosque on a Friday, the imam will tell you who to vote for, who to kill, which shop to burn down, and you go and you do exactly that. Now they have risen. You know that God has a way of fighting for his children. Everything happening in Nigeria today is punishment from God for the role that these Nigerians played during the war against Biafra. I say it openly, and it will continue. It will continue until exactly five and a half million people will die in Nigeria for what they did to Biafrans, because we did nothing to them. Absolutely nothing. They wanted to wipe us out from the face of this very earth with the help of the British, but God intervened. That's why we're still alive today. If not, our race will no longer exist. That was when they planted, they, they sowed the seeds of division in us. Somebody from Ahaba will say, I'm not Igbo. You're from our nature. In Delta, you say you're not Igbo. Huh? Hey! I don't know what type of God made us, you know. And now we are suffering, isn't it? Ask yourself, why was it that the entire East couldn't raise up a security network until we came? They couldn't do it. They were afraid of the, of the North, <laughs> of their masters. They couldn't do it. And having found the courage to, if not for ESN, do you think that what is happening, do you think that Yoruba will have the courage to go and sack Flannis from their, from, from their forest? I'm asking you a question. If not for ESN. After all, there was a Motekundia before. 
But it was when ESM came, they knew we meant. You know, you know, we don't listen to you. Uh, Anya was one no We don't hear all this useless uh, gossip as I talk is rubbish to us. We continue with our mission. And that is why we always win. They, they know where their own bandits are. But they cannot bomb them. But you know, they come with the helicopter to bomb all. And yesterday they killed a boy there. And of course, vengeance is coming. After all, you will come and you will hear it. In the same vicinity. Because if you kill us, you will revenge. You don't know that? It will happen now. Tate, you, you hear the story. Uh, in the kind of, uh, uh, it's not everything that we've been uh, uh, talking about all the time. Not everything we're talking about all the time. They know where the bandits are, but in the southeast, the zoo soldiers went to Olo to kill members of Eastern Security Network who are protecting the villages against flooding headsmen. Have you heard of such rubbish before? No, no, of course, only in the zoo. Only in the zoo. Only in the zoo. Zoological Republic. And the people don't know the mess they're in. <laughs> I want to read you a story that is very, very sad. I'm telling you. The decomposing body of kidnapped Edo prince was found. I'll tell you his story. The decomposing body of Atlanta-based prince Elonio Dennis Abuda was who was kidnapped in Edo on January 30th, 2021, has been discovered in the forest. Who killed him? Fulani. <laughs> a top security chief who spoke in confidence authoritatively confirmed the discovery. He came from Atlanta in Georgia in America. Now he's dead. Why is he dead? Because he's a Nigerian. Do you hear that somebody went from America to Cameroon, went from America to Ghana, Went from America to Benin Republic. Went from America to Liberia and was kidnapped and killed. It's only in the zoo. And somebody will wake up tomorrow morning and tell you, "Let us work for unity of one Nigeria." <laughs> Very sad indeed. He's there. He's gone. Who killed him? Fulani kidnappers and headsmen along Ore, along Ore uh, uh, Ore Bini Expressway. ESM can go there to clear them. But once we go there, they say, oh, they want to expand. They want to replicate the march to, to Lagos of 1967. We don't want them here. But Fulanis are there killing you and raping you. So when that time they used to tell you that, oh, oh you are different. You are Midwest. You are Bendel. You are God knows what the South, South. They, all Fulani was doing is to divide you. Keep dividing you. They divide you to conquer you. That was something that Britain taught them. And British um, military or intelligence officers are in Abuja right now. I'm speaking to you. Advising them on how to conquer you. British intelligence are in Abuja right now. Telling Fulani how to conquer you. Because Britain feels that if they conquer all of us, uh, the oil will be more or less, uh, if they were taking 100 barrels for free before, they start taking 200 barrels. You don't know that? Is the conquest of the intelligent by the unintelligent. That's what I do. That is what they have to do. And if you don't take time, it will overrun you. Look at what your bad newspapers are doing for their people. Compare that with BBC. Look at BBC. Rejoicing that I was removed from, from Facebook. BBC, they, they are rejoicing. They were the BBC. <laughs> Hi. Oh, dear Lord, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy upon us. The same people, BBC was there during the genocide against Biafrans. At the end of that very encounter, we lost five and a half million people. The second worst genocide in the history of man. Only behind the Jewish Holocaust in Europe. It was swept under the carpet. No commission of inquiry, no international investigation, nothing. BBC made sure that nothing of that sort happened. I don't know. People are discussing all over the place that Fulanis were being given a victory order by, by Governor Akredodu and others to leave the state. He asked them to leave the forest. He didn't ask Fulanis to leave uh, Yoruba land. No, it is those murderers in the forest to leave. 
but you have people now who are busy protecting them, who are busy covering for them, saying no governor has the power to evict other ethnic group from the state. And I ask you, are Igbo people living in Kanu, are they living in the forest? Are Yoruba people living in Bauchi, are they living inside the forest? And by the way, isn't open grazing banned in the zoo? I read one of them saying, give us money to buy land. You know, there are some debates they have in the zoo that makes you wonder if they're human beings at all. Are you sure they're human beings in the zoo? Of course, they're zoo animals. And that's what gets some of them. That's, that is what actually gets them to, to become very, very upset with us. Do you know what frightens, well, not what, do you know what pains me about Fulani and Nigerians? Is that Nigerians are very docile, they're very cowardly, they're very foolish, and they're very, very reticent. Now listen to this. Exercise firm action against anarchy. El Rufai of Kaduna State. The same El, you know people are so funny, you know? The same El Rufai that brought Fulani bandits from the Sahel and assembled them inside Kaduna State. The same man that told you that he paid them money to stop killing. That he went to their houses in Niger Republic and gave them money to stop. Are, like, are you people, this Nigerian, these people, they call Nigerian, are you people normal? Are, you people, are, are your brains working at home? This is the man that brought this insurgency. Him, the midget, terrified. Because Britain assured them that they are there, nothing will happen. Go, uh, take any land, go to TV land, take the whole of Benue, nothing will happen. Britain assured them. It was this midget, this idiot, that brought insecurity, insurgency, and banditry into Nigeria. Now, having firmly planted their people in every forest in the south, they are now telling you every governor take action. Look at this idiot talking. Is he the president of the zoo? Of course he is now. He should come out to open his sack and curse him and he will die. They're all dead, all of them. I will curse him. He let him come out and say he's the head of the cabal now ruling the zoo. Some of you are so daft anyway and very naive. I saw Buhari. I went to see Buhari. Which Buhari did you see? Which one did you see? Where is Aisha? Where is Aisha Buhari? I'm asking all of you. The zoo people. Where is your so-called first lady? Where is she? Because she is not an Igbo woman. If it were to be President Jonathan now, Yoruba media will have a few day. They will write and write and write. But when it comes to friends, they are cowards. Timid cowards. Pussycat. They run away. They are cowards. They are cowards before Fulani. Look at the way they took President Jonathan to task when she was in office. They were writing about patients every day, making mockery of her. Where is Aisha today? She's having a good time with her boyfriend in Dubai. All of you dimwits are busy foolishly writing your junk as always. I feel sorry for you people. The man that brought insurgency has the temerity to tell you uh, against the backdrop of ethnic tension arising from headsmen and indigenous crisis in the southern part of the country, Governor Nasser El Rufai of Kaduna State has called on governors and leaders at all levels to step in. Step into what? This was what I told you that Britain had in mind. IPOB stopped them. Only IPOB. And at the end, only IPOB will take the credit. We will not share it with anybody. It was us that stopped Fulani from taking the whole of Nigeria over. IPOB. The same people who proscribed, outlawed. We are the ones that saved you. And your sorry ass is all of you. Do you see what? Erufai is saying, as I told you before, that's what they, that was what I wanted to do in 2022. When they launch that all-out attack, ethnic nationalities will resist, and Britain will step in and say, oh, uh, let's calm everything down. Calm it down, please. Uh, the, the tension is too much. But meanwhile, those of you that have taken land and settled in the Boeing State, stay there. Those in, in Abia, stay there. Those in Enugu, stay there. Anambra, stay there. Everybody in, in Delta, stay where you are. In Bayelsa, stay where you are. That will now become the new boundary. They will say, after all, you are in Sabongiri. And let me make it very clear this evening. Every Biafran living in the north, you better come back home. 
allow me to repeat very clearly and tell your people who are there every Biafran in the northern part of the zoo you better come back home they are using you people to blackmail us they say oh you have people in, in, in Kanu you have people in Kaduna in Zaria we are not going to stop anything that happens to you in the north is your business if they are going to twist your brain to be against your own freedom let me assure you that you're not going to succeed you won't succeed the hotels the buildings that you have in the north is secure after all i think Abubakar has a property or properties or string of properties in dubai dubai is not part of, of the zoo called nigeria Buratai has properties in Dubai. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? You must come back home. If you remain in the north, they're going to kill you. They will use the resistance that we're putting up back home to kill you in the north. I know some of you say, well, we're going to stay our business and all that nonsense. Ndubi Sindukako. That's what I have to say to you. Because Biafra will have the biggest economy in the whole of Africa in a matter of years come back home if you stay in the north they are going to kill you and use us as the reason why they did it that's what they want to do they can't just that's what their governors are planning to start killing people in the north they say after all uh, flannies are being killed in the south they won't tell you that these are fulani bandits terrorists murderers rapists and killers they won't tell you that they say flannies are being killed and bbc is there don't forget bbc is there to carry this news for them don't forget that British government will be there, as always, to go to UN and tell them that, oh, foreigners are suffering. Hey, they are suffering. They are being killed. That's what Britain is going to do. If you don't know, let me tell you. So be very, very careful. Every time I made a broadcast on Wednesday, where he urged leaders to exercise firm action. Firm action means uh, stop Yoruba youths from agitating for, for, for foreigners to leave. Stop ESN from doing what they're doing. That's what they mean by firm action. Bring the army. But if they bring their army, we will kill them. And you They came to Olo four times. They were defeated four times. Now, yesterday, they went to go and kill a little child. What is going to happen in this? All of us who are going to Hague. Everybody will go to Hague and stand trial. I want to stand trial in the Hague. Me, personally. Because there's no going back. No going back home. Not one inch. Not one single inch. No going back. We must be free. We must be free. I said must, M-U-S-D, must be free. The zoo, Nigeria, was created by a white man, not by God. The only creation that I respect is God's creation, not man's creation. Do you know what I think that's, you know, Vox Populi, Vox Du, which is the voice of, of the people, is the voice of God. Listen to me very carefully. If people were to get together today to say, oh, I want to remain in Nigeria, that is their business. That is the voice of God speaking. That is God speaking. But not one deranged drunkard. They brought him back from Hong Kong, sent him to, to West Africa to stop the, the eastern advance of the French. That's all. And, but I agree. And I ended up in Nigeria. That is, that is an abomination. You know, some of you black people, you don't have any shame. You know, as blacks, we have no shame. There is no shame in us. But I have a little bit of shame left. No betul that can create a country for me is impossible. Only the people can. And that is what we, why we are doing what we are doing. IPOB successfully collapsed the agenda of the Janjaweed. IPOB stopped them. Any everybody talking from Governor Autumn to everybody, every activist, you owe your courage and bravery to IPOB. We are the pioneers. If you don't know. The little midget is crying because we have collapsed the agenda completely and totally completely and totally history will remember ipob nigerian government has failed us we are not afraid of that zamfra bandits they are commander do you see your people as writing kill him find him bomb him they are causing insecurity no they won't because they are afraid cowards should not be journalists they shouldn't be have you heard them call for their head? If it's ESN, hey, 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 you won't hear a word. 
but as I said before, I don't know the translation in English. I'm okay with all, all the your gossip, or your all the nonsense you're saying doesn't concern us. You you've been saying the same garbage for 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 how many years now? How have we been perturbed? Has it stopped us from doing what we're doing? You can talk from now till the kingdom come. It's not going to stop IPAB from, from doing what it's doing. They have their own bandits. The difference is very clear, isn't it? The response they gave to ESN, trying to protect our people, and I'm the bandits, go and check it. Look at the newspaper coverage of ESN activities. Look at bandits in the north and everywhere. Look and go and do compare and contrast. You will see the demonic nature of journalism in the zoo. Evil people, the people without conscience. You will come out and you write boldly and very clearly that IPOB is proscribed. But whereas the person raping you and killing you is not proscribed, and you're there, and you're a journalist. Anyway, we shall see. <clears throat> and as they said, you know, there's a prayer I pray every blessed day. I never fail to say it. Anytime I'm praying, uh, it, of course, I pray in the language of the ancients, in Igbo language. I say to Chukwokeka Biyama, Elohim, the creator of the universe, you know what it means. Let that hand that our enemies use in trying to poison us, may they unwittingly put it in their mouth and they themselves be poisoned. And this is it. It's happening in the north. Residents flee Zaria neighborhoods over kidnappers' rampage. So as El Rufai and all these idiots think that they are going to build this wonderful Fulani empire in the zoo, they are not going to be alive to see it, neither will their children be. The northern part of the zoo will be like Afghanistan. Watch and see. That is why I want our people to follow, be very strong and resolute. Follow me. We want to draw what is left of their army out. Let us bring them to the east. They can never go back. Let us bring them. They say, oh, don't fight a defensive war. No, we are not going to fight it. Let we want to bring them to the east. We now open up their flanks. To bandits, bandits will attack them and take over their land because a bandit is a bandit. That's who they are. They are kidnappers, they are killers, they are murder terrorists. What they want is space and resource. Space and resource. Or should I say resources in this case? So once this army moves to the east to come and meet us in the east, their land will be open and terrorists will ravage them. Terrorists will ravage them. That forever and ever, Florida can never recover in the north again. Never. And that is the plan. So when I tell you that there is a method in our madness, please believe you me. We will not go out to meet them in their land. We will draw them to come. And then we will swallow them up. And then their children and their children's children will suffer the consequences forever and ever. And this army will be destroyed once and for all. That is how you obliterate the zoo called Nigeria from the face of this very earth. They cannot fight on the ground. Now we know the only place they can fight is in the air. They will go, like cowards, the cowards they are, they drop bomb and they run away. That's what they're going to do. Because on the ground, we have defeated them on the ground. We have defeated them completely. They know they engage us on the ground, they will die. They understand that very well. The only option they have is to go to the air and be dropping bombs and, 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 and disappearing. So, so be very, very careful. Residents are now fleeing in Zaria. In Zaria, or their own Zaria. This is El Rufai Zaria. You know, this idiot cannot remove the log in his own eye. He wants to remove this tiny speck of wood in the people's eye in the south. He has bandits terrorizing his own neighborhood in Zaria in Kaduna State. But his concern are the murderers and the killers in your own forest in your backyard. What does that tell you about these people? What does that tell you about these people? Now you understand it very well. This is my simple prayer. God, that thing that they did was doing to them today. That, look at them. In the ancient city of Zaria, there are rising cases of violent abductions of residents. They brought killers to come and kill us in the south and take over our land. Now the killers are taking their lives in Zaria, in Katsina. What they brought upon themselves, all because they wanted power. All because so they, they wanted to, to answer and hair to the, the, the rightful hair to the throne of Otman Danfodio. That's all. 
and this idiot who called uh, El Rufai things after Buhari is him that will dip the Quran in the Atlantic. You don't know it's a race for them. Some of you uh, uh, intellectuals in the in the South, you don't know this. You don't know that they're in competition. Who will be? Who will history remember as the man that actually dipped the Quran in the Atlantic? That's the race they're all running. If you don't know, that is why they will never ever condemn banditry. That is why they will never ever rise up to condemn what the the atrocious behavior of Fulani headsmen because they want to conquer you. If you like, believe. If you like, do not believe. That is the reason why I keep wondering what type of zoo Nigeria are people in. If you're not allowed to perform as VP, please go. Bakare is telling is telling um, in a place where you have a constitution, you have law, you have supposedly you have law. You are begging. Everything is beg. If you are not allowed to perform, a whole vice president. Come back. <laughs> and in Abia State, look at the stupidity of the South. In Abia State, we pay every headsman, every uh, we pay headsman 100,000 naira for every cow they killed. Why? Because it was uh, uh, the, the so called Flanny presidency that put them in power, all of them. And it's Mieti Allah. So if, we, if you kill any of our cattle, even if we are grazing illegally, or even if the person heading the cattle, uh, you know, is found to have been to have raped a woman, please take hundred thousand. That's what they are doing to in Abia State. Now, okay, see, as the people who are killed at Umba High, sorry, at um, National High School in Aba, the clip is there on Al Jazeera. You order because you you are the chief security of the state. Now I realize you people have been lying to us. Even when you ask. Uh, all these eastern governors they don't know uh, we, we don't have any powers we don't have any powers yes you do why is it that you know your state in ondo in a how come that the army hasn't gone there to shoot people to shoot you but you dead because the governors haven't actually invited them that goes to show that it was you people that asked the army to come to national high school in Aba to kill us it was you people that asked the army to come to Mpo to kill us and uh, well, of course we know what we care is up to in a water now do you understand it do you understand it very well you you are paying full any headsmen that are raping our mothers hundred thousand hope you are not paying them ha half a million and you want respect of course a few days ago he was started to speak as if he's a human being i don't know where he got the courage from i don't know where maybe esn he has seen esn working so he knows he's protected and he wants to talk like a human being. Very, very sad indeed. This is live and direct. The time now is seven minutes to 8 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra and the same number of minutes to the top of the hour, regardless of where you are. Seven minutes to the top of the hour. That tells that we are live and we are direct and the whole world is listening. The Nigerian army executed our people. They said they gave them a reprieve. They didn't actually execute them. We want them to produce the six boys so they can say something to the world so that we can know that they are alive. We need to know that they are alive. Please, very, very important because nobody in their right senses, though nobody in their right senses can believe anything that comes out of the mouth of the Zoological Republic, especially their army. There is one fool called MC Asuzu. He said he's an is a lecturer somewhere. He's a he's a modern day version of um he's the modern day version of um of Upa Biasika, the same university of Ibado. You know that's where they groom proper Igbo Sabotuas, the yeah. Konkwan is the university of Ibado. That's where they groom them. There is this man at the University of Ibado. His name is MC Asuzu. He wrote something about uh, keeping Nigeria one. I don't want to go through all the nonsensical garbage Didiot was writing. He claims he's a lecturer, he's a librarian somewhere. He was uh, in as usual. You go online, you copy, you paste, you copy, you paste, and then you join the grammar with ease, with ease and by. 
and therefore you 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 jumble everything together. You're intellectual. He wrote absolute garbage here. And um, from the nonsense he's writing, he's trying to tell the world <laughs> that um, <laughs> I, I want to tell you he's a Igbo man, Igbo, LGBO, Konkwan. He's in the University of Ibadan. The modern day Obiasika. You know, I love when people write this disparagingly about me. I love it. I, I, I love to read it because it, it amuses me a lot. And it reminds me that I shouldn't fail. You know, that's why I read it. That's why I love it. It reminds me as to why we cannot fail. That is why you need opposition and criticism. It keeps you on your toes all the time. It makes you conscious and aware of how many people that want you to fail. And when you think about it, you become energized. Now listen. After this man must have finished writing his junk, he's an evil man, no? It's complete and useless evil man. After writing all his junk, he came, he said, unfortunately, one young man, I am 53 years old, but they call me a young man because my God loved me so much that he made me as handsome as I am. So of course, some of them are jealous. So if we cannot say, give you your dues, because of the way you look, we are going to say you're a young boy and I love it. May I continue to remain young? You see, I don't know why people actually bother themselves. When people say that young man, I claim it, I claim it. I say, oh, in the name of the most high. When you say that, that small boy, I love it. That is why I look small every year. Despite the fact that I'm 53 years old, I look very, very young. Because you don't know, it's when people say you're small and you look small, you look young. Please don't let people say you're old. Though. Once they say you're old, you start uh, looking like the hotelier. Unfortunately, this man wrote Asusu. One young man in the southeast whose section of the country has been considered by the present federal government as the primary and first target of their envisaged national military conquest allows himself to be fooled. The evil man writing. I allow myself to be fooled into the asshole of that thinking. Okay. He's speaking English. This is what a whole Guardian newspaper published. Guardian of all people allowed such words to be used on the publication. Do you know that this man is an intellectual, so to speak? Intellectual, the tongue one. This thinking ones. Intellectual in Ibadan. He's writing. So this man is telling us that he doesn't see anything wrong with Fulani in our towns and villages, raping our mothers, building their settlements. He sees nothing wrong. He's in Ibadan. And I don't know why bandits and kidnappers cannot go and catch such a person. And they, they killed that young prince that came back to his hometown all the way from Atlanta in Georgia, USA. When there are food, his name, find this man for me, MC Asusu. One complete idiot. He said that we are fooled into thinking that the Flanagan want to conquer us. He's an intellectual. At um at Ibadan. <laughs> hey, hey, Ibo, who did this evil yourself? This your self hate. You want you want your people to be conquered. Who did this thing to you? Who I'm asking you? Who did this to you? You hate anyway people who can rise up one morning and decide to use their grandmother for ritual. I mean, what would they do? Very sad indeed. This man went on to say, maybe he's, maybe he's working for Britain. So, he's talking about me. In Guardian newspaper, this is their opinion column. So, he organizes a guerrilla warfare outfit and talks a lot of rather very silly and militarily incoherent responses to disorder Buhari military stratagems within a so called. <laughs> he has written like one idiot right now. He said, after, after messing up with words, you call him an intellectual. To us, he, he is an intellectual. Mad people everywhere. I am simply defending my villages and my towns. I'm defending the East. That's all. He says, I'm fighting Buhari. <laughs> intellectual in, in the University of Ibadan, where they groom saboteurs from young. Anybody who went through University of Ibadan is a potential saboteur. Sabo! 
betrayer and the traitor. That's how they groom them. This one is there. I don't know. Maybe he's a librarian or he's a he works in the zoology department. I don't know. He has written. And a security network that was formed to protect our mothers when they go to the farm. A security network formed to drive away illegal, illegal terror encampments in our land. Somebody is saying uh, something completely different from our objectives. He's an Igbo man. He, does, he maybe wants to be a minister or maybe a commissioner. You know, your state. By betraying your own, by writing rubbish. Now, what Britain will do is they will take it and say, oh, can you see what this man wrote? This MC Asuzu, find his picture, please. This MC Asuzu is an Igbo man. He doesn't believe in what uh, Kano is doing. He doesn't believe. They are all for one Nigeria. That's, that was why he wrote this joke. Does it bother us? Of course not. As I told you before, you know now, Okwabra man will live to Kenya. If you kick frog or a toad, you are giving that toad a lift because it's going to jump anyway. All these things, they energize us. They infuse us with courage and determination. I never take these things as anything at all because we are determined and very resolute. Either Biafra comes or we all die. It's as simple as that. Some people speculate. They don't, they don't even know where I am. They are just speculating. To dampen your spirit. They write all jumps to... to they, they know you're a black person. Once they write something into your spirit to go down. But I thank Elohim for IPOB. Very resolute and determined. These people. History shall remember you people forever and ever. The history of Africa will never be complete without, I, without IPOB being mentioned. You people stopped. Single-handedly stopped the zoo from being swallowed up by Flamish and Jehudism. You are immense. I have to, you know, you know me, I like good news and bad news. You know, in those days when you write a term paper, uh, when you write an essay, as, well, as it's called in the UK, uh, if you write something, let, let's say they ask you to choose a topic um, um, to, to, to write about, and you submit your paper having either extolled the virtues or castigated that very subject that you're treating. When you, when you give it to your lecturer, he or she will say to you, no, that you are not balanced. It means that you have to weigh the pros and the cons. You have to tell us the good and also the bad. And then in your conclusion, you tell us why you have fallen for either side of the argument. You can never come and say, something is good, good, good. There must be something bad about it. So that is why it's always good to have balance. Always take the, the praises with the criticisms that comes along with it. It's a very beautiful blend. It's very good. And that is one thing that IPOB... This evening I talk about IPOB so much because they single-handedly saved every indigenous ethnic population in Nigeria from falling at the feet of Fulani Islamic Janjawudism. That is why I honor IPOB. And there is something else that happened in Edo, which is very, very critical. And also Bayelsa. Our mothers in Bayelsa are protesting. Those in Edo are protesting. Tomorrow now, when the history will be written as to how this revolution started, people will not remember that it was Bayelsa and the Edo women that started street protest against what the Fulanis are doing. So I want us to place it on record, please. That when the history of this new phase of revolution that is coming is written, we must acknowledge Igodomi Godo women and also those in Bayelsa for their courage, their fortitude, and their determination. They came out on the streets to protest. And we must also encourage what ESN is doing, protecting also. It's a very difficult task, but they're doing it very, very well. And as we have always known, they will come. The Janjaweed will come with everything, the police, the army, they will try to intimidate. You know, the, the, the whole thing will last about eight months. And then after that, they will give up. We know how they work. We know their psyche. We know their brain. They will try everything. They will use the traditional ruler. They will use the governor. They will use the protest. They will use a flip. This MC has to find the idiot's picture, please. We want to find him. And ask him uh, if he wants to go from Opa Abiyaseka. Because Opa Abiyaseka, the arch betrayer during the war, was also a lecturer at University of Ibado. Surprise, surprise. Bayasa women must continue what they are doing. They are raping them, they are killing them in the farms. 
and anybody against ESN is also against our mothers, is also against our farmers, and we don't want that to happen. And in order to fool everybody, they have said to uh, people, return home, not an elder, tell headsmen. And you think they're going home? Is that what you think? <laughs> is to lure you into a false sense of security, and then they strike. They're not going anywhere. That's the way they behave. If they leave today, I'll be the happiest man in the world. And as they are going, all of them in our bush, I said there will be no illegal settlement in our... It doesn't matter what you say. I don't give a damn what you're going to say. It doesn't matter what you say. If you are in the bush, how, we have a, how many days? Is it nine days we have? Is it ten days? If you are living in the bush, we don't care where you live. We don't... You must come out into the township. If you don't do that, then anything that happens to you is your business. Every illegal settlement in the East will be dismantled. All of them. Nobody is ethnically cleansing anybody. We are asking them not to occupy our forests. Go to the townships, go to the cities, rent a house like every other human being and live there. It's as simple as that. Please. If you don't know what intellectual means, please try and Google it. There are idiots mainly from the East who join two words from the dictionary together and think that they're making sense when they are making an absolute mess of their own idiocy. They are everywhere, especially on Facebook. And they turn home, they are trying to trick you. If you fall for that trick, then you're finished. Allow every citizen to buy AK-47. There are some fools who are saying, oh, but why are you armed? Why are you uh, raising a militia? Not a security network, no. Every So even Mieti that, that are doing the raping and the kidnapping, they have their own vigilante group. These this intellectuals call them vigilante. But when we formed our own to defend our land, to, to stop our mothers from being raped, they call it militia. That's how you know a saboteur. Sabo Konkwan, that's how you know them. Sabo Ntik, that's how you know them. They are working for the enemy. They are trying to use English language to deceive you. English that they cannot speak. Because do you know why I call Zoo people pseudo-intellectuals as, as Ojuku referred to them? Or half-baked intellectuals. You see all that grammar that they write when you read it as, hey, Zeke, Zeke, Kwoncha. If you want to know how daft they are, just simply thrust a microphone in their face and ask them to make a sentence or to make a speech. All that grammar that you're seeing they are writing will disappear overnight. That tells you that they are not the owners of what they claim that they have written. That's how you know fake people from the real ones. Allow every citizen to buy AK-47, according to Governor Ishaku. Where which state is this man from? Taraba State Governor Darius Ishaku on Wednesday asked the zoo government of Nigeria, or should I say all of them, the zoo government of the zoo, to allow all citizens to own licensed guns and AK for them for that matter. What does that tell you the zoo has fallen? The zoo has fallen. Is that very clear to all of you now? A governor in the north, they are full and a lord. A governor in the Darius Ishaku, I don't know if he's from, of course he could be, who knows where he's from. He could, for all I know, he could come from, from Cameroon. And after the place beside, he joined the zoo. Nobody, uh, we don't know who is you anymore. Uh, or maybe he came from Niger, from Chad. This man is called Darius Ishaku, he's the governor of Taraba State. He's asking government to allow everybody to bear arms. And people have the guts to question the reason why ESN is bearing arms. Do you see the foolishness of some people? Even those that sent their murderers to come down south is now appealing that everybody should have a gun. Why is he saying it? He said that 15 local government chairmen in Traver State paid him a condolence visit following the death of one of his colleagues who was kidnapped and subsequently killed by gunmen. So Janjaweed in the north, they are begging and pleading for guns to be made available to people to defend themselves. And some idiots are questioning why ESN should be armed. Did you? I can't. Hey, you believe a warrior. Foolishness everywhere. 
that tells you that the zoo is finished. And there is one thing that I do not like about this. I'm not going to doubt because it's, it's local politics, but I think it's very, very terrible. There is a particular man, he said he's a pastor. He was talking about, and anyway, I'm not going to go into it. Let's, let's leave. It's about electioneering, and we don't want to, you don't want to go into it. But there's something that actually amazes me. People ask us, why do you agitate for Biafra? Why do you do what you do and all the rest of it? And I said to my people, all across the board, those from the north and those from central part of Biafra and those from the coastal region, have you ever asked yourself this question before? Why is it that Wari Seaport is not working? Why is it that Igwata Seaport is not working? Why is it that Calabar Seaport is not working? Why? And you all believe in one Nigeria. Why is it that only Lagos port is working? Because that is why I have regard for this new generation of Yoruba agitators right now, wanting to be free. Because there is something that has been going on, and I want to ask my Yoruba brothers this, please. Yoruba, I want to ask you a simple question. If the roles were reversed and only Calabar Seaport is the only viable and functioning seaport in Nigeria and Lagos is there, how would you feel? It's a simple question. How would you feel to come from Lagos all the way to Calabar to clear your goods and then take it to Lagos when there is Atlantic Ocean also and a port in Lagos? How would you feel? It's a simple question. If you can answer that question honestly, then you now understand the way we feel. That there is something wrong with the zoo called Nigeria. There is port congestion. And Papa, you cannot go through it. Every time it's congested. But you know, we have a seaport in Wari, one in Igwo, Chapot Harcourt, and one in Calabar. That's because some of you want to consume everything. You see, that little alliance you went into with Fulani, you, you scratch my back, I scratch your back, the rest can go to hell. It's unraveling now, you see. Can't you see that it's unraveling? How can you be comfortable to sit in a country and talk about equity, talk about unity, talk about fairness, when you you people are the ones allowed to, to have a seaport. Is that fair? Is there any country of this world, and maybe apart from Germany, that is almost landlocked, where you have, I think it's only Hamburg, that is a seaport, where you only have one seaport? Britain that you got independence from, they have seaports dotted everywhere. Why this level of wickedness? Why do people love to collude and connive with Fulani? to cheat other people. Is that a good thing to do? Now Lagos is congested. The port is congested. Why don't you move some of those ships to go to Wari to offload for those who are in Edo, those who are in Delta to proceed to Iguacha to Port Harcourt to offload for for for, for the Southeast to, pro, to proceed all the way to Calabar to offload for people who are in, in that part of the world. What is wrong? Why, the, why this level of greed? Why? I'm asking. Now the port is congested. Is that a good thing? Do you see why we want to be Afro? Why we want to be on our own? Because there is a level of insincerity and wickedness in Nigeria, which I can't tolerate personally. Why should Lagos be the only viable seaport? Why? Answer that question. And I'm sure you can't answer it. You cannot, can you? And when people from the coastal region of Biafra talk about nonsense about Niger and all that rubbish, I, I pity them. Stupidity of the highest order. Stupidity of the highest order. Nigeria's unity is a joke. A pathetic, wretched joke. Britain that is supporting you to keep Nigeria one. How many seaports do you have in Britain? Southampton, Liverpool. Um, just name it. It's all, you just Google it. It's all over the place. But in order to punish the East, in order to make us prime targets for conquest, everything must go through Lagos. Is that fair? The same ship will offload in Lagos, and the same ship will go to will go to 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 Gabon. Do will even go to Cameroon to offload? Will go to Gabon to offload? Why not stop in Calabar or Port Harcourt, Igwacha or Wari? What is wrong with you people? What type of wickedness is this? Is this the type of country that I'm asking? I ask you if I'm asking my Yoruba brothers, all of them, everybody, will you be happy if the only viable seaport in the whole of Nigeria were to be in Port Harcourt, in Igwacha? Will you be happy? 
you now come from Lagos to Yigwata to clear your goods, will you be happy? Supporting evil is not good, you know. It is not a good thing. I'm not say I'm saying this thing because I love the Yoruba people. I love the Yoruba race. This is what I respect today. They are all Yoruba people. But uh, there is a level of injustice you can't allow to continue. It is evil and it is not good. And that is why we won't be after. I'm sure that you can understand and relate with that. And somebody said, in continuation of what I'm saying, the insecurity in Nigeria, you should blame the Yoruba people for the emergence of Buhari. It is called political expediency, and I'm very, very happy today that, that such nonsense will not happen again. That this revolution we are about to embark upon, or we have embarked upon, will continue and survive any effort by Tinubu to try to hijack it for his own purposes. Come 2023, that we stay very strong and very resolute. Remember the generations unborn and do the best we can to ensure that we leave a future for them that everybody will be proud of. A future of freedom, prosperity, progress, camaraderie, togetherness and oneness in truth and in every honesty. That's what we want. Nothing more, nothing less. Kazaure, who is he? He gave an interview. He said that the North knew that uh, Buhari was a spent force. He was an idiotic senator, Ibrahim Kazaure. The North knew Buhari lacked the capacity for leadership. They knew it. The North knew that he couldn't lead. This is from his own people, Ibrahim Kazaure. Who put Buhari there and today they're killing us, today they're killing the bad people? Was those who were foolish enough to follow Tinubu. Here we are now, and everybody is suffering. Everybody is in pain, and everybody is complaining. And that is why we must bring this whole nonsensical zoological republic to an end. Because the more Nigeria lives, the more people are going to die. It is a country of not just wickedness and unbridled thievery. They have taken stealing to a whole new level altogether. None of the <laughs> they import. Hey, they, they no, they don't produce crude oil. They dig up crude oil from the ground. Instead of taking it to the nearby refinery, which is at One, they take it to the ones that have built in 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 Morocco and in England and in Equatorial Guinea. They refine it there. And the money they used to build all these refineries came from Nigeria, mind you. Let's, let's call it Nigeria. They stole the money from Nigeria. They went out. They went out home to go and build refineries with it. Now export the same crude oil outside, refine it, bring it back, and pay themselves. Um, uh, what's it called again? What is that thing they call it? Uh, not, oh my goodness. Is it old age or what? Subsidy. But there are four refineries. Four refineries. Four. And now let me shock you. Those four refineries, how much did they cost to maintain for last year? I just, I'm, just, I'm just asking. The total value of output by the refineries for the period under review was zero. But they Recorded operating deficit of 5.49 billion naira. The refineries are there, they're not doing anything. But you still paid the Janjaweed managing it 5.49 billion. Now, what happens to crude oil when, when it comes from Nigeria? They send it abroad to refineries, but meanwhile, they have their own. They refine it. And as the fuel, as the spirit is coming back, you now pay a subsidy on it. Tell me which country on this earth is more idiotic than Nigeria. That's absolutely not. And on that note, we make every assertion, every claim that the only alternative is freedom for all ethnic nationalities trapped in the damnable zoological republic. And for that very reason, there is no other option than freedom. I thank all of you for listening this very day. Next time we're going to get it right. Next time we're going to try as much as possible to also broadcast of via, via Twitter and also Instagram. But I must thank you all for listening. And for those of you who are going to propagate this very message, I wish you all the very best. 
we are not going anywhere. ESN is not going anywhere. All the propaganda in this world they can bring to bear on our activities, we are not stopping. If they kill us, we are going to kill them. Many of them. I can assure you of that. Anything they want, we give to them. And with all the love in my heart, from me, from here, on this glorious evening, it is good evening.